Attention please, flight number 10 has arrived at gate number 3. Says no to me. That's not so. 
Seems like ever since he got that idea of that old house. Bandy, that's your daddy's dream. James is for sleeping. This time, cinder block of brick. I found a rubber tire on the side of the road. Come on, the least you can do is eat what I put. Where's Brandy? Outside. I thought I told you not to let him go running around with that gang outside. Well, yes, you told me. Well, if you want to keep him home, one of us has got to stay home nights. Otherwise, you can put the locks on the outside and keep him in, Blue. How long is it going to be like this? Until we get something of our own. And this is one day's tip closer to the winter. And we're getting there. Yeah, but Bandy needs things now. He needs his winter clothes. And... Bandy's going to get here. I think we'd better be going before we both lose our jobs. Keep putting every coin we make into that house envelope, leaving us nothing to live on now. I'll just as soon quit at the hospital where I don't make no money anyhow and go back to working for my ladies. No, you ain't either. Now, you'll clean your house, you clean your own house. And you get that nursing degree just like you always wanted. You ain't gonna be Serena the cleaning lady, cleaning up white ladies' house. You're gonna be Mrs. Blue. In your own home. Now, you understand that? Huh? Mrs. Blue in her own home. And I said go on in the house. Now, you want one upside the head or what? One half hour, okay? Okay. You've been in that house in a half hour. Tell them to stay when I told them to go. Well, Serena, we got to pull together. 
I know when you're getting so tight and the boy's pulling away from you. Says who? You can't see your own son coming close to hating you? The boy don't hate me. You know, Blue, ever since you got this house bug, you're different. And you're pinching and scrounging and working and... You think that's made you an easier daddy to your son? I did it all for him and it's all for you. You think it's made you an easier man for me? All right, then, well, well, what would you rather have me do? You want me out there on a hustle with Temple so you don't know if I'm coming home or if I'll be in jail all night? Or you want me to be some kind of rum dumb drunk so you can go out and do all the work and pay all the bills? That make it easy on you? I'm not saying you're not a good man, but well, what you saying and what you afraid of? You, letting the young years of Andy's life slip away without you being any part of them. And me, losing the man I want to a rotten old house I'll never get. Now, that's what I'm afraid of. And if you can't see it, you're blind. I'm going to teach him first. I'm going to work as soon as I start, as soon as I finish. I don't know what you're talking about. Don't do that. Hmm? You want to go to work with me? Where? We're going to unload Esmeralda, and then I'm going out on the side of the road and see what I can pick up. You can be my helper. Help me. Whatever I miss, you see it. I'll give you a half. I mean, like you get a cement brick or something like that, you know? Maybe five cents, something like that. I'll give you a half of it. Or you can work according to time. Now you want to do it. No, thanks. I'd rather stay with the project. So you asked me to do things with him and then that. Uh... He wants to be your son, Blue. You ain't hiring no helper. He's your child. Sometimes a man says one thing and it means something else. Huh? I get awfully lonely driving that car by myself. And what I'm trying to say is that I need some company and help. That's all right. I can help you, too. All right, good. Then we get Esmeralda emptied out and get rolling. What's scavenging? Scavenging? Why you ask that? Mama says you're the world's greatest scavenger. Oh, yeah. Well, scavenging is when you find value in things that other people throw away. Scavenging is like, like looking for a used transmission to buy. You see, instead of a brand new one, that's going to cost us $18 million. And that just may be the difference that's going to get us ahead, you see. You, me, and your mama. Scavenging. Here to fix up ten houses. <laughs> I gotta get the first one first. Hey, did you go to the bank like I said? No, sir. Why not? They've always been nice to me. Oh, yeah, sure, because you got collateral. You got this place. All I got for collateral is these, hands, and they don't give money at the bank for hands. Look, how much would it cost you to fix it up? About five, six hundred dollars, but that's one step forward and two steps back, man. Yeah, but... I think you're going about it the wrong way. Well, that's the only way I know. Work it. And if I was you, I'd see the numbers, man. I tell you, he needs a runner. I ain't looking for no numbers, man. Look, man, you're at the airport every day, you're at the station at night, and all the cruising that you do around here, I think you'd fit perfectly. I'm not looking for no hustle. Yeah, but it 
pays a yard and a half to 200 a week, man, which you have right in the palm of your hand, plus a bite every time somebody got a hit. You want me to talk to him for you? No, sir. All I want you to do is see if you can find a transmission out of FedEx Morales. Now, you got anything else you want me to pick up or deliver anywhere? No, not today. Hey, but speaking of picking up, Temple might want to run down to New York. No, I don't want to have nothing to do with Temple. I don't want to pick up nothing. I don't want to deliver nothing. You see, I don't want to spend time in that Green Rock College up there with no hustler. Bandy? Bandy, come on. Hey, come on, hurry up. Watch all the things that you can't have in color instead of black and white. Now what else? You got two jobs, mama's got a job. Saturdays and Sundays you do haul and we still got nothing but else to run. To this daddy, he just got one job, but he's got a Cadillac. To this daddy's got a hustle. What's a hustle? Hustle is like when the big boys took the little boys' lunch money on the way to school. That's a hustle. Hustle is like when uh, you want to do something and you want some money. And you don't care how much money you get or what you do or how you get it. I mean, that's a hustle. There ain't no reason for it. You really want this old house? Baby, this ain't no ratty old house. See, this is one step forward and no steps backwards for you, me, and your mom. Now today, it may look like some ratty old house. But you see, I look ahead, see? Don't look at now. See, I say that this place one day will be ours to live here. Place you can grow up in. Quiet, peaceful, like people. Should. Like people. Now, what'd you say to that, Bambi? Don't know. All right, then, Bambi, what is it that you want besides Cadillacs and color TV, which I'm not handing out today? Well, there's a study trip coming up for school. Five days in Washington. We get to ride a new train and everything. All right, now, what does that cost? Seventy-five bucks. Bambi, seventy-five dollars. $75, son. That's, that's, that's a whole lot of money. $75 is, is a new wallpaper for your mom. And $75 is, uh, is, is, is a new genre, a toilet. $75 could, could give you your own room with a little hidey hole for you to read in. I mean, $75 is a lot of money, Brandy. There's a picnic this afternoon after church. That's only five bucks. Can I go on that at least? Well, we'll see how the day goes. We'll see. I know what that means. Well, it's mostly for you, because I'm used to it. And my daddy used to say, 
Even the best seed have trouble growing up in poor soil. Because the project's all you know. And that's the poorest soil to try and grow up and live right. And that's all there is to it, Mandy. So don't get mad with me. Cadillac and color TV. They ain't never got nobody up and out of no place. Just keep them there forever. Paying the bill. But this house will. All right, I'm gonna sell these two tires, see if I can get some horn work. You wanna help? Only if I have to. Well, how are you gonna pay for my window? It's not your window, it's not your house. Well, it will be one day. Dime by dime and dollar by dollar, don't neither one of them grow on trees. You got to dig. Got me a run to Hartford. Can I come? Nope. All right, you help me good today now. You earn this five dollars going to the picnic. And don't overdo. the church. You can lick the spoon afterwards. Where's your dad? Better run the office. You been fighting? No. Did he say anything about coming home in time for the church supper? No. Stop scratching all the time. First scratch you get summers, you keep picking at them and they never heal. Come on in here. You're picking on me just like Daddy now. Well, don't you go bad mouthing your daddy. Lift up. You could have lots worse. You don't like that anyone than me. Daddy working all the time. No time for us. Now listen. What I say to your daddy when we get to fussing and what you got the right to say is two different things. You're working full time, taking home full pay. Since he wasn't much older than you. And you come up to half the man he is and you're on your way. Stop picking and scratching. I can't help it. It just don't heal. See, that's what your daddy wants to get away from. Dear God, you getting sick all the time. Fast as you clean up, it's dirty again. Where's that 
form you brought home from school about the physical. Up there, so Miles. What you want to do? See if I can get one of the doctors at the hospital to look you over. Want the looking spoon? No. church with me? Help the ladies set up for the supper? I don't want to help no ladies. I'll be back. Why do you think they'll be back? I don't know. Always depend on whether he picks up another run or not. We never do know for sure, do we? No. But it's all for better things someday. How come then everything has to be someday? How come there's never anything good right now? Maybe he's messing around that old and then I found three high rolls when I go to New York. Mm-hmm. Hi, 
Thank you. Be no bother, Blue. Be glad to have it. Going in a cabin? Sure, man. All the way in back again. What do you say, Blue? I got some work to do around the house. Oh, listen, man. You can't be working all the time. Matter of fact, why don't you come and go along? And we can sit down and rap. Uh, I got some work to do around the house, and I was including Vanny in it. Sure, man. Sure. Well, Vanny, catch you around the next time, kid. Okay, let's go, fellas. I hate you. I'll just stop that. Hey, yeah. What'd you do that for? You know, it's just a waste of money. Go on that trip and that boy gets sick every time. Fun for a kid is no waste. You know, there's something you left out of your system of living out of envelopes, Blue. You and your whole life, all wrapped up inside of an envelope. Yeah, I got all my dreams and I don't want to. And no room in it for Vandy. I still think it's been decided. Well, it's nothing but seven hot dogs and pop and all that other junk he ate. I'm hurting the wrong place, but I'm inside. Don't you think you should be staying home? Yes, I think I ought to stay home today. But I just got shifted from the night hours to day hours so that I could be home nights, and now this had to happen. I just hate to see him. Put all my aches and pain and have to miss school again. I know. I never mean, have one of the floor doctors giving him a good physical. Well, that's good. Now you're talking. Because I think there's appendicitis, and you tell him that. Instead of all them hot dogs and junk. No, Blue, if you want to say I told you so, why don't you say it? Because if I did, then you just say it never would have happened if I had been with him. people at the taxi cab place and tell them I ain't working on them. No, don't let me do what you don't want to do. I was just saying, I got pictures in my mind of how to live and just have trouble telling them. Their dreams? Yeah, but they're better dreams than what's at the bottom of a bottle. It's better than playing the numbers. It's better than taking any amount of dope. And they get us further than any Cadillac. And I know I'm going to get where them dreams is going. I mean, because, like, where we at is, I mean, it's like, you ever see them, like, mice in a, in a cage, and, and all they do is just run their little legs and just keep going round and round on that wheel. Just keep running, 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 don't ever go no place. Well, I'm running, but I'm running to get off of that wheel. I mean, it's like living right with some kind of show, and all we get to do is watch. Well, I'm raising the price so I can get in on it. Engineers. Planes still coming in? I don't know. 
just think I'd get people doing the job. Well, as long as the plane's coming in, you got something to clean up, and I got luggage to haul. You gonna cross the line? It ain't my strike, and it ain't my fight, and I don't get nothing from this pension. I don't know. Hey, man, look, if we struck for three fifty an hour, you think they'd be out here standing with us? And besides, I don't see no black cats out here. Wait a minute, Blue. No, man, let the airlines and them fight it out. I need all the bread I can carry home. They can put the book on you, Blue. You cross, and they pass the word. Is that a fact? My cousin. It happened to him in Newark. First thing after the strike was settled, he was let out. Face it, they've got the power, and you know it. Here, Foreman? Yeah? I need some work. I can give you some work. How's your back? Thanks, Brian. Good. Two bucks an hour, go over and see John. Hey, John! How are you? I was thinking that this gardening gonna make it. I think we'd turn it into some kind of nursery school or something, you know, for kids, for working ladies' kids. Mm -hmm. Now look, I was thinking we'd take that barn and split it in half, and half of it be for my shop, and the other half be for the kids in the wintertime, you know, like when it's raining. Blue. And you, you get that degree from that practical nursing school, so your mothers be flocking to bring the kids in here. Because I figured, like, you know, 25 kids, 25 cents each kid for every hour, that's six dollars and what fifty cents. To get laid off? No, no, there's a strike out of the airport. How long? Oh, I guess for a day or so, but they don't make no difference. I got a construction work coming through the week, maybe longer. I'm going back to day work, Blue. No, you ain't. Yes, I am. Now, maybe we both be better off. Look, Blue, you don't realize how the world is going. And you're always looking ahead somewhere. You don't look around you. There's a depression going on. I heard it at the hospital. People saying things don't get worse before they get better. Money's tight, Blue. Everybody knows it. 
Well, see, maybe that'll make things work better for us. They may even lower the price. We can get started soon. We may, they may even take a thousand dollars down. Well, you got your choice. Now, it's either me and Vandy, or it's that crazy rotten never be nothing shack. This is Blue. It's Vandy. What's the matter with Vandy? He passed out, clutching on his stomach, kind of like fighting for breath. Where is he? A daddy ran him over to the hospital and told me where I'd probably find you. It's not the first time, Mr. Blue. Vandy's always fighting for breath, seems like. We drink it. Okay, Serena, you can dress them up. Mr. Bogart, Mr. Bogart, please come. I heard check him in tonight, but I don't want to move without a thorough hematological workup. Less blood testing, analysis of a lot of different factors. Do you think this is hard? Well, I'm reserving diagnosis right now. Look, he's just as well off at home tonight, if you keep him quiet. Hmm. Now, I'll call you the minute I can arrange a consultation with a specialist. Uh. Does it hurt here sometimes? So hold on. Scrolling pain. Vandy, would you uh, wait outside for a moment, please? You want to take off from them, too? That's right. Now, scoot. It don't hurt much. <laughs> you want to take off from us? Yeah. Doctor? Oh, just, just one, one second, please. Get a pencil and paper. Oh, I get a pencil and paper. Yes, sir. St. Vincent Hospital. Dr. Folkman. Uh, pediatrics. Let's take Bandy over there, 8.45 in the morning. He says he's got an idea about what may be wrong with him. And this is a man that can look at him. Don't you and the nurses ever talk about what may be wrong with Bandy? They don't tell me. Well, when you took some blood from us, so it must be something wrong with us. Or something we did. Get back routes and make beds. Whatever it is, sure ain't growing pains. They'll find out. Well, he wants me to get some uh, some clothes for him. So he's gonna stay a little while. He's gonna get. Yeah. Huh. What 
he needs is you. All right. You. Take no more blood. Well, whatever they do, as long as they get you straightened out so you can make that Washington trip. Even if you're not working? Even if. Because a strike can't last forever. Man can always find work with his hand. If he's a man. Hey, look at that. Look. Take a number. We're supposed to have an appointment. No, take a number. The clinic don't open till 9. We're supposed to have an appointment with a Dr. Folkman at 845. The name is the Vanda Blue Jr. Well, it's the first I heard about it. Now, take a number. Vanda? I'm Dr. Folkman. Blue. Let's go. We'll be just fine.
supply in the vein, so uh, he's got it in the joints and in the lungs and in the heart. How come only black kids get it? It's because. Why? Don't ask me why. Why don't you ask the preacher why? Why there's tall, why there's short, why there's smart, why there's dumb? Why does black water is white? And why is the sun? I mean, it ain't our fault. We ain't done nothing. Did they say what they're going to do? They say they're going to give us some medicine and keep quiet. Give some blood. Make them stronger so they can hold out longer. Now, what all did they tell you? Well, mostly what you said. How, um, you get born with it. How a bad infection can set it off. The sores on Bandy's feet. How he always seems to keep a cold. How only black children. Just one in four. He's gonna die. Didn't they tell you that, Serena? We're gonna lose him, Serena. And then just think to the sickness. The Vandy sickness is he was born black and poor.
Yes, Doctor. Yeah. Thank you very much. What? You can bring him home tomorrow. Well, I'm going to go take a walk. Okay, stay with me. No, I got, to, I got to take a walk. I got to figure out how to tell him about dying. I mean, it just wouldn't be fair for him to, to hear it from somebody else or for it to slip out from one of us. And you know how his ears are around this house, so I'm going to take a walk. Do you want me to? No. It's my child. He's our child, though. Everybody's my son.
Now, just between you and I, your ma's got a coming home thing going, so we'll give her some time. All right? Mm -hmm. Man, I want to talk to you about people. See, there's, uh, there's three kinds of people. There's uh, yesterday people, there's tomorrow people, and there's today people. My father, he's yesterday people. Everything is yesterday. Yeah, well, I'm telling you right now, you can talk about all the cars you want to, but it ain't nothing like riding in the back of that wooden wagon when I was a kid coming home from work. That was the way my daddy talked. All the thing, everything was yesterday. And when we moved up east and started working, dad still say, yeah, well, you really don't know the value of a dollar until you chop some cotton and the, when the sun is down on it. That's your granddaddy. My father. Yesterday. Now, your daddy. That's you? Yeah, that's me. You know what kind of people your daddy is? I don't know. Tomorrow. See, I'm a tomorrow people. Everything is tomorrow, someday. My whole mm -hmm. life in that envelope. All my dreams in that house. Chickens, a garden. I was even going to build a little nursery. Dreaming and scheming, saving and craving. But no more, Vandy, no more. No more what, Daddy? There ain't gonna be no more front porch, no batty hands, no living in the spirit of fear of today. No more being afraid, eh? Afraid of today. Me and you and your mama, we're gonna be today, people. Why? Because everything that's important is what you can put your hands on today. It's all this talking. Because I got sick? Yeah, it's supposed to come back to us. Daddy? Yeah. Is it because I'm gonna die? Why say that? Am I gonna die? Yeah. Mm. Young. Uh, Everybody's got to die sooner or later. It's like traveling. Some people make a short trip, some people make a long trip. What's important is how, how you make the trip. Daddy and child. Making it as much together as can be. I'm putting it off tomorrow, today. You got it. You got it. pocket so that I could buy you all the things in the world and you couldn't even see for looking. I mean, things ain't gonna change things. So I will want to give you whatever you want today, if I can. Now, what about that, that trip to Washington for five days? I mean, is that what you want? What do you want? I want to know what you want. I ain't going to no trips nowhere. Well, now, don't worry about the money, because I can scrape it up. It's 
not the money. Well, what is it? Well, if I was to go away and get sick, I would just want you now. Yeah, but suppose you get to Washington and you get to sightseeing and having the ball. Now, wouldn't you want that? No, I only just want you. Everything still feels the same, Daddy. I can't see nothing different but you and me. your hands. Because your mama baked a special cake for you. And later on, when we get finished, I got someplace special to take you, me, and your mama. Go make a little trip. trip and making it together, daddy and son, well, this is it. Just like that song that you're always listening to. Be with the one you with and love the one you with. I'm sorry, Dad, you're not too hip. Yeah, you don't get it. Granny, get in the boat. You're kidding. I'm not kidding, get in the boat. All right, come on, Serena. You can't go messing with other people's boats. This ain't other people's boats. I put $50 down, threw it at the garage. Give me $150 for that stuff in the back of my car. Now, come on. No, you all go on. He's your son. No, he's our child now. Come on. Say, come on, help your mama get in the boat. Come on now. Easy. Mama in the boat. All right now. Randy, here you go. You the captain. Put it on and say when. Let's go. Let's go. All right. <laughs> You know what I was thinking about this boat? It works so fine, we could rent this out for fishing parties. And then we could smoke the fish and sell it. You know how people go. Get some luck out of here. Cast off there, Captain. Make a hard right anchor stopper. Take a bite to all your friends on shore. <laughs> <laughs> 